Well, good day, viewers. Today we have a 2014 Chevy Silverado. It's a 1500 crew cab. It's here for a number of electrical problems. Okay. Well, let's put a scanner on it and do a network code scan of all the controllers and see what it has to offer. It's a got on it for mileage. 134,000 kilometers. So I've got a record on this thing, so I reloaded the record. I've had it in here before. This is the one I did a oil pump on, which I posted a video for. Two hundred and fifteen. How come it says two hundred and fifteen thousand? Oh, it must be in miles in the truck. Let's do a code scan of all the controllers. <coughs> I wish the Snap-on scan tool had a topology map. Fuel trim, rich bank one. Fuel trim, rich bank two. Uh, usually, contaminated engine oil, maybe leaky high-pressure fuel pump. The check engine light was not on. Control module communication bus off. Invalid data received from engine control. While the U0401 is because of the fuel trim codes 172, 175. So let's investigate this P0172, 175, or 174, the rich codes. Let's see what the oil level in the engine looks like. Okay, it is about three quarters of an inch above full. Doesn't feel too bad. I wonder what the oil life remaining on this is. I'm going to start it up and run it and see if we got negative fuel trims right now. But it's like we got a high pressure pump leaking into the crank case. At least that would, that would be my guess. So we're going to look at engine control codes. 172, 175. And let's see what the freeze frame data stored is. I bet you would see the fuel trims pegged. Fuel trim bank. So we've got three freeze frames. Let's look at this one first off. Uh, distance since last failure, 115 kilometers, so it's fairly recent. Long term fuel trim on bank one was negative 30, and short term was negative 4, so that's a total of negative 34. negative 30 on bank 2 and negative 7 so a total of negative 37 so it was definitely getting fuel from somewhere it's running fine right now but I don't know what the fuel trims are I'm gonna look at data right now and see engine data fuel trim data fuel system data ever since they went to GDI on these trucks Man, now, I don't know if he's recently done an oil change, but it's over full. Fuel pressure. You would think, you would short to think fuel trim would be in the fuel data. Well, not in that data list. Uh, misfire fuel trim data. Maybe we'll try the fuel trim data list. How's that sound? <coughs> Short term and long term are negative. Right now, negative 13 total and negative 9, negative 2. Hmm. I bet you if I take the 
I wonder if I can take the PCB valve out. So here's a 5.3 that I swapped out of a 2016. And this is the PCB line here underneath the throttle body. You can't really access it. Well, maybe I can get at it here. But it's got that cover on the intake manifold. This one's missing the cover, so. You can either disconnect it here and cap off this line or try and disconnect it up there. This is the PCV valve, I believe, right now. Let's have a look on the truck over here. Before unplugging the PCV line, it's running at negative 14 on the long term. So let's see what happens when I unplug it. So I've capped off the crankcase vent PCV and we'll let it run for a few minutes and see what happens. You see they're starting to come down now. So there's definitely fuel in the crankcase. And the most likely source of that is the high pressure fuel pump. Let's also check the uh, residual pressure when we shut it down, see if there's any leaky injectors. So on the top left we have fuel rail pressure at about 640 PSI and supply pressure at about 50 psi 50 to 51 and the pressure sensor voltage so i'm going to turn the key off and then turn the key on back right back on again so we don't lose data this fuel pressure should increase as the engine goes through a hot soak So you can see it's climbing because the heat from the engine is rising. There's no more coolant circulation. The low pressure fuel pressure is decaying and that's more or less normal. Although I don't know if that's, that's quite a bit of a decay. I wonder if that indicates that the check valve is leaking or maybe the high pressure pump is leaking. But this is a good sign. The high pressure side of it is actually increasing. We started at about 640, now we're at 740, 750. Let's let it sit for a few minutes. So after like five minutes, we're up to 826 on the high pressure side and we're down to three PSI on the low pressure side. I would have expected the low pressure side to hold pressure longer than that. So I'm gonna call the high pressure fuel pump, leaking oil into the, leaking fuel into the crankcase. And we're gonna recommend an oil change as well. 